Manchester City are the champions of the world. Here is the post-match reaction from Manchester City 4, Fluminense 0. Wow, what a game of football that was yesterday. We're the champions of the world. Started off being the champions of England. Next up, champions of Europe. And then now, we're the champions of the world. What a 2023. This has been for City comfortably the best year for this football club. The best year of my life, do you know what I'm saying? Of course, we created history for our football club yesterday, but it would be the first time we've ever won the trophy. But we also created history for English football. It's the first time a team's ever won the Queen Triple. Eh? The Queen Triple, the Premier League FA Cup, Champions League Super Cup and Club World Cup all in the same year. We're massive. What can I say? We're the best. First things first, we'll talk specifically about the game of football itself and then we'll talk about what it means and all the good stuff that comes with it. But yesterday's performance, wow. Domination. A fantastic, fantastic performance. You know, going into this Club World Cup semi-final and final, we weren't playing well. You know, well, we're not playing well, but we weren't playing at our best. You know, we were nowhere near the best level we've seen us. And I felt like this was an opportunity for us to patch things right. You know, two opponents that realistically, it's hard to map the scale of how good they are compared to Premier League opposition, you know. But oh, we just battered both of them. And they put up a fight, Fluminense. I won't lie, they put up a fight. Obviously, it was a very early start for City. 40 seconds in, Alvarez getting on the score sheet from a Nathan Ake strike from about 30 yards out. Imagine that would have went in the flight of the ball, the way it curled. Part of me wishes it was the Ake shot that went in, but look, I was just buzzing. When they look 40 seconds in, and we were in control from then. We were always going to win this game, you know. It was a little bit of nervousness because it was such a big occasion for City in the football club, but come on, we were always going to win this game. As I said, they put up a fight, you know, they were very, very aggressive, as you'd expect from a Brazilian side, you know. They were, they were hungry, do you know what I'm saying? They weren't holding back, we're seeing it on a few of the tackles. They played some nice football. I'm not going to lie to you, they played some nice football, very risky football. You know, when you think about the quality that City have going forward, I respect the confidence, you know what I'm saying? I don't think it's arrogance. I think it's confidence in the way that they play, you know, playing out from the back, playing it across the box, where Alvarez pressing, Phil Foden pressing, Bernardo Silva pressing, Jack Grealish pressing, you know, it takes some doing so. Fair play to them. They didn't deserve anything from the game, obviously not. You know, they didn't really create any decent chances. But, yeah, they, they, they held their own is what I'd say. But this just was your typical Manchester City performance. You know, what we'd expect from a City team, domination all over them, the passing, was superb. It's what I've been what we've been missing, you know, for some reason the passing's been a little bit sloppy lately. The passing was crisp. We took our chances. We created so many opportunities. Defensively solid. Kyle Walker, Nathan Ake at fullback. They are our two best fullbacks. That is what our fullback partnership should be. Look, I love Gavajo. I think he's been a great signing and he's a fantastic centre I'm not saying he's not a fantastic fullback, but Nathan Ake should be our first choice left back. That is He's better in that position than Gavardo was. It works better for the team. I don't see why we don't do it. I thought Phil Foden was excellent yesterday. Another big game that Phil Foden has shined in. Shined in. Do you know what I'm saying? Obviously, he got that own goal with from Phil Foden. It weren't a shot. It was looked like it was going to be a pass. But Phil Foden created. It was a fantastic pass to Foden, though. The third goal being Phil Foden. Again, beautiful finish. A beautiful but worked, worked goal. Do you know what I'm saying? A, a lovely team goal. And then the fourth one, Alvarez. Oh, that would be my favourite goal of the game, I'm not going to lie. So he took it with his right foot, gave himself a bit of extra time, sent the defender, a beautiful finish. The connection with that football was perfect, a beautiful finish. And that was just the icing on the cake. Do you know what I'm saying? 4-0 domination. But not only the performances, you think about this trip to Saudi Arabia, Harlan's come back in training, Doku's come back in training. We've seen footage of Kevin De Bruyne training. Now, does that mean they're going to be back forever? And of course it doesn't. I don't think any of the three will be back forever. But... Things are on the up, do you know what I'm saying? City are playing nice football again. We've won another trophy. Kev is back. City's back. Come on! Look, of course, we cannot talk about yesterday's game without talking about that scare that we had with Rodri. Rodri, a horror, horror tackle on him. He goes down holding his knee. He's screaming. He gets back up. He plays on for a minute. Goes back down. Has to come off. And we're all terrified. But then we see in the celebrations, the man's at the back, bouncing up and down. And he's fine, you know, we've seen his interview after the game. He said he was scared, you know what I'm saying? It was the worst tackle he's ever done in his career. I don't know how he won a red card. But he's okay. He said he'll be fit to play for Everton, which is all that matters. Do you know what I'm saying? I was terrified. You can have watching us lift the trophy and all the celebrations. It doesn't get old. You can't get tired of it. You know, people say, you know, oh, do you not get sick of your team winning? You know, there's no, there's nothing like to be nervous for. I like that. I disagree. I couldn't ever get bored of watching his lift trophies. I really couldn't. It's a great feeling. Five trophies in one year. Come on. There's no better time to be alive. How anyone could seriously think 
because there's no fear factor of getting relegated or come on we're lifting trophies man Think about how mental this is for like players who are just like us playing of our own you know what i'm saying phil ford and rico lewis the, the players that have been born of blue I, i've grown up supporting city playing for city and now look at him phil ford and think about how long he's been at city for now he's 23 years old come through the academy made his debut at 17. how many seasons he's been playing for us already he averages a, he averages a trophy every 15 games how mental that is. Rico Lewis, 19 years old, just turned 19. He, he made his debut last season. He's won a treble. He's won five trophies. He averages a trophy every eight games. You know how mad this is. There is no better time to be alive as a Manchester City fan. I'm loving every second of it. And I think this is going to do fantastic things for us this season. You know what I'm saying? We've been dropping off slightly. People talking about complacency, maybe. You know, we've not been at the same level as we were after winning the treble, which look. It's to be expected. You'd expect a little drop off. You think with the players we've had out injured as well, but I think this will only do good things for City. I think this will lift us up. This will help us push on. There's a title race on. You know, there's a title race on. I think winning another trophy like this, reminding us of how, how important this feeling is, how good this feeling is, it'll only do good things for us. It really will. And I still think we're going to win the league. I really do. This will push us on. You know, by the time we're recording this, it's an hour to go until Liverpool Arsenal. When this goes out, we'll probably be kicking off. A draw there would be ideal, regardless of the result, though. I still think City will win this league. I think we're a push on. And as I said, this could be this is a major factor. This could end up being a major factor. You could look at this as, as a mini turning point. You know, we're headed into the second half of the season. We're gonna do it, man. We're gonna do it. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. This is the best I've felt about City in a little while. Do you know what I'm saying? It's been a bit shit. Not shit shit, but it's been a little bit shit, you know. You we can't hold on to leads. We're not playing the same football we were. But oh we're back, baby. Anyway, look, I am going to leave it here because I do want to watch the Liverpool Arsenal game. And if I'm going to edit this and get it out in time, I'm going to have to start now, do you know what I'm saying? So thank you for watching. I've enjoyed making this. I enjoy watching City win. I'm enjoying life in a minute. It's Christmas time. It is Christmas. City are back. And um, yeah, look, before New Year's, there'll be a few more videos out. Do you know what I'm saying? We've got an Everton preview to do in the next few days. Uh, then obviously talking about Everton game and then there's a preview for Sheffield and the match they love for Sheffield. Sheffield at home being the last game of 2023 will end it off in style. In style. An emphatic win I'm hoping for. For what has been, what will end up being, hopefully anyway, as long as we don't bottle it to Sheffield, an unbeaten season at home in 2023. How crazy that is. We're the best team in the land in all the world. Look, I'm buzzing. I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff. Have a good Christmas. And um, yeah, nice one.